But I notice that this war was planned long ago. And I notice that they made the attempt long ago. September the 11th was not the first time that they attempted to blow up and bring down the World Trade Center. Twin Towers. I was there in New York when the first attempt was made. I believe it must have been January 1992. It was winter time. And guess what? There was a Republican administration. A Republican administration. It was Bush Senior. And guess what? There was a Jew who was identified to be part of the planning committee. And then he disappeared. And guess what? There were a number of Arabs who were duped into this. They didn't know what they were doing. And the rider van was packed with explosives and taken into the basement of the World Trade Center and then exploded. But the buildings did not collapse. Six floors were damaged, but the building did not collapse. It was clear as daylight that the Arabs were not themselves the architects of this effort, that they were duped. Because the fellow who rented the van, the Arab boy who rented the van which was used in the attack, he had to give a deposit of $400. The day after the attack on the World Trade Center, this fellow went back to the office to collect his $400. <laughs> Not knowing that the, the van which he rented was the van which was used in the attack. And so the same forces who attacked America on September the 11th, but this time they did a better job. Because they rigged the buildings with explosives all the way up. They rigged the buildings with explosives, you see? So that when the explosives were detonated, the building could collapse nicely. The way you do a perfect demolition job, all the way coming down. This time they did a better job. The last time they failed. But in between the first effort and the second effort, there was a democratic government, Bill Clinton. It was not a Republican Bush government. And so the war on Iraq had to be put on hold. It had to be put on hold while Clinton was in office. And then when Clinton won re-election, they said, oh my gosh, we can't stand up for another four years of this man. How can we bring it down? How can we bring it down? And then they sent the girl named Monica. <laughs> A Jewish girl named Monica. This was not simple hanky-panky. No. This was an effort to bring down the government so that it could be replaced with another which could serve the interests of those who wanted to take America to war on behalf of the Jewish state of Israel. They even took Clinton to be impeached only the second time in U.S. history that an effort was made to impeach a president. But Clinton was a gritty old horse from Arkansas. And Clinton survived. And so they had to wait. And then they bit their nails in fury when Al Gore polled more votes than Bush in the election. And only with the help of their friends in the Supreme Court, with a lot of Jews in the Supreme Court, they were able to hand victory to George Bush. They needed this man in the White House before they could pull off September the 11th. Like they needed his father before they could attempt to bomb the World Trade Center in 1990. Once they have this man in the White House, they can now attack Afghanistan. And they can now attack Iraq. 
And as your Prime Minister correctly said, they have other agendas after Iraq. He's correct on that. This war was made possible because there is a clique who now have control of the White House. In order to gain complete control over Mr. Bush, they had to have September 11th. Once the World Trade Centers collapsed, Bush was now putty in their hands. How long will the present window of opportunity last for them? Because they're saying after Iraq, we're going after Syria, we're going after Iran, we're going after Libya, we're going after all these things. How long will this window of opportunity last? Answer, so long as Bush is president. And so I want to say to you, it is not America which is waging war on Iraq. It is an America which has been hijacked. Many American people, without even knowing that the American government has been hijacked, many American people are protesting against the war. An American woman did what none of us have done. An American woman did what none of us have done so far. She left her home in Olympia, on the west coast of the United States. And she went to Palestine two weeks ago. to protest with her, with her mom, with her body, what is happening in the Holy Land. And she stood up before a house which was to be demolished, thinking that because she is a white American woman, Israel would not dare to do with her what Israel has been doing with the Palestinians. She attempted to stop the tank. The tank never stopped. The tank not only rolled over her, but came back and rolled back and rolled back. So she was killed. And so this is not an American war on Iraq. This is a war by a government of America which has been hijacked. A Bush Republican regime. The next elections are likely, are supposed to be in November of, 9th of 2004 which is about 17, 18 months away. So they have a window of opportunity lasting another 16 months or so to do as much as they can do before the next election takes place. If Bush loses the election and the Democrats win, then the window of opportunity will be closed and they'll have to wait again. But if Bush wins the election and is re-elected, then the window of opportunity will remain open. Now then, why do they want the war on Iraq? And why do they want the war on other countries after Iraq? Number one, now is our microanalysis. I've taken one hour and 15, 20 minutes. Number one, to make the region safe for Israel. Number two, to pave the way for Israel's big war of territorial expansion. Number three, to take physical control of the oil so that the physical control could be passed on to Israel. Number four, to take control of water and then pass on that control of water, the rivers of, 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 of Iraq, to Israel. Number five, to facilitate the consolidation of Shia Islam, that is Shia Iran 
and a Shia government in Iraq, whether Iraq is one state or many states, and Shia Lebanon coming together in one greater Shia world, and then to foment rivalry and conflict between Sunni Islam and Shia Islam. Divide and rule. Number five, to pave the way for the fall of the United States of America as the ruling state of the world. And there are many American political commentators who are now predicting this. Number seven, to allow Israel to replace the United States as the ruling state in the world and to force the submission of Europe, of Japan, of the Muslim world, of Malaysia, <laughs> and the rest of the world to the rule of Israel. And so finally, to allow Dajjal to complete his mission of impersonating the Messiah the Jal, the false Messiah, impersonating Nabi Isa Islam, the true Messiah. These are the basic objectives of the war at the level of microanalysis.